Welcome to the North Phoenix Suburban Stead. My name is Rich. Today, we're fixing a Hunter Douglas blind honeycomb because it's broken and it won't rise and it won't fall. The clutch inside spins, but the ropes are ripped and torn so it won't pull up. One of the most popular videos on the channel is Hunter Douglas blind repair the things they don't tell you. We're gonna be doing some of those things today on this blind. But let me first state that Hunter Douglas is awesome. Quality stuff, these blinds are over 10 years old um, and they've lasted and they still uh, operate well. We still like them very much. When parts break, they're really easy to get new ones. In fact, all you have to do is go to the Hunter Douglas website uh, identify the types of blinds that you have and maybe some of the parts that you need. These are clutch assemblies. Well, not clutch assemblies. These are lift spools that go onto the clutch rod. We've also got, if we want to, we'll change the rope and the connector for the rope, uh, the tensioner, if you will. So anyway, Hunter Douglas, awesome stuff. No charge. Got them in five days. So these are the tools that we'll be using today. We might not use all of them. We may have to go grab some others, but let me show you. We've got scotch tape. We've got rubber bands. We have a paper clip. We'll straighten that out a little bit more. You'll see why that's important. A pair of pliers. We got a screwdriver. Uh, we may or may not use these. Uh, we'll see what it looks like inside. Scissors. We've got the uh, Easy Rise uh, lift spools. And then again, if we were going to replace the rod or the, uh, the, uh, the rope to rise it up and down and the tensioner, we'll be putting a new one on as well. So pretty straightforward stuff. All right, let's roll. All right, before we take this thing off and begin working on it, what you wanna do is actually look inside the honeycomb and see, it's a little bit difficult, but see if you can see if there's any debris inside there. Specifically what you're looking for is pieces of the rope or the tape or whatever you want to call it if there's any fragments or little pieces that may be in the way you want to fish them out. I check this one out. We're all good so we're gonna go ahead and take this thing down and begin to fix it. So let me first show you how we take this thing off. Now it is fully extended. I can scrunch it up now and then grab it off but I'm gonna take it off the top and I'm gonna slowly lower it to make sure that I compress the honeycomb. But the things they don't tell you uh, when you watch all of these videos on how to fix these is how do you take them off? Now this is three brackets. The brackets that you have may be different. This is called a duet or an applause um, honeycomb blind. So the brackets may be different, but they're pretty straightforward. You bang it and then you curl it. And it's important that you curl it because there's these pieces on the bottom that the back of, uh, of that center piece or the top piece holds on to. So let me just show you that again. That's how it is. That's how you do it. Just bang it off the top ones, curl it, and you can lift it off the bottom ones. That's it. Let's lower it. All right. So you'll see that we lowered this. Just a couple of, of hints here. Again, things they don't tell you is that when you lower it, it's really important that that honeycomb falls in place correctly. Meaning you, because we're gonna, we're gonna stick something down uh, through it to clear it all out and you wanna make sure that it's perfect. So get another person to help you if you can and take your time in lowering it and make sure it's compressed correctly and you can see here it all looks really good. Now we'll put some rubber bands around it so we can keep it compressed and then we'll begin working on it. Our work area. So it's really important, don't let this thing fold over. Uh, again, because we've got to fish something down through the top there. So we'll just put some rubber bands around it to make sure that it stays in place. Also the rubber bands will stay out of the way of the clutch rod. Um, for when we have to deinstall that. Right. 
Okay, so let's get a closer look at this. We're gonna take off this end here on the easy rise uh, with just a couple of screws and that's gonna give us access to the clutch assembly. You'll also see the rope here is on that piece. Our problem is right here and that is the lift spool. And if you can see in there, a little hard to see, but if you can see in there, it doesn't have much of the tape left. We're just gonna take these off and we're gonna replace them. You'll notice that I move the rubber bands uh, away from that because as we pull the clutch rod out, these will probably slide, but we want to be able to have access or at least hold them when we pull that clutch rod out. Uh, before we even go ahead and get started, one quick note on the tools that they, Hunter Douglas delivers this, I don't know if you can see this red wire here. You know, I'll probably show it to you when we get to it a little bit more detail, but it's pretty flimsy to stick down through the hole to go ahead and send the tape through it. So that's why we're gonna use probably a screwdriver so we can stick that down if we need to, but we're definitely gonna be using, this is a paper clip. And all we've done on this paper clip is just straighten it out so we can get it straight down that hole. Uh, this is one of the areas where the pliers will come in. So that was just some setup as we go ahead and do this. Let's take off the end here and begin taking the clutch rod out. So you'll see I just walked off this um, assembly, the up and down, the rope pull or the pulley to rise it and lower it. I just wiggled it off of the clutch rod. So here's a good view of the clutch rod and the rise assembly. And you'll see pretty simple just to go ahead and move this out. If you can see this piece right here, let's see if I'm getting that on camera. This is just a clip that goes on it that's that stops it at the spool right there so the clutch rod doesn't move back and forth. We want to slide that off to be able to pull the clutch rod all the way out. There you go. So now here on the um, lift assembly, it's actually just a little bit of a twist and they come right off. Now watch as I pull this up and you'll see the tape is completely busted. So. I can't even find the end of it here. But I can see right down there, and I'll give you a view on that in just a second. Let's take this other one off. Here's a good view. You can see where this tape had uh, broken right there. So we're just going to replace these spools. I'm not going to wind up any tape. That's craziness. Okay. All right, so here you'll see we've got the rod off, and if you see that hole, I'm gonna try to get some light in there. See if you can see in there. And we want a nice straight hole all the way through to the bottom of this. Now before we start this, however, we wanna detach it from the bottom. And this is an important step, and again, things they don't tell you. I'm gonna flip this thing over. Now when we do that, what I wanna point out to you, let's make sure I've got this on film here, is this piece right here. So this is a component that when you fish the tape through it, it comes out here and there's a couple of different plastic pieces um, that you will then lock in the tape on the bottom here. But what you'll notice too is just, there is no like extra piece. It's cut right to the edge. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do, don't do that. Do that. Don't do that. This is this is one of those things they don't tell you. I can't even grab that piece of tape, enough of it to even get this thing off. So we're gonna mangle this piece because they shipped us new ones. So we're just gonna go ahead and figure out how to get this thing out however we can. You'll see I just lifted it there with a screwdriver. And now when you pull on this, try your best to get all of that tape. Don't let it rip if you can help it. Try to get all that tape out, and you'll see it's coming out here. Come on, baby. 
Nice. When you put these pieces back together, um, leave yourself a lot of tape tail. You'll see that in the other video, that it's one of my big pet peeves here because you want to be kind to the next person who's going to have to repair this, which, by the way, will likely be me. Will likely be me. Be me. Be me. Be me. Alright, so here's a look again into that hole that we need to fish through. Uh, this time it's a view from the bottom. Hunter Douglas delivers in the package this thing. So this is just a, a handle here with a wire and you'll see as I try to fish through that hole, it's just not strong enough and it bends and it's just, it's weak. So that's where the paper clip comes in. Again, things they don't tell you, right? I do have a screwdriver that's relatively thin if I need it, but let's see if I can get some better light on this and show you what's happening here. So here you'll see I'm kind of going up and down and I'm just kind of still moving it around, just trying to get that through the hole. And it seems that it's gonna be stuck right there. So this could be the honeycomb that didn't fold right. It could be the metal part uh, for the top riser. Kind of get an idea of how deep I am. Yeah, it looks like I'm right about there. So it's probably right there. But what we'll do is flip this thing around and come from the other end. And it could be that tape, that piece of tape right there. That's the debris we're talking about. You got to be able to remove that. Could be a piece of plastic. Let's take a look. something's there it's not letting me get in there it's like performing surgery all right let's try it again from the other side I'm just moving it around a little bit moving the blind around just seeing if I can get that through somehow It just doesn't want to go through. I think it's hitting this piece here. So it looks like, if you look at the end here, it looks like this is extending, although we did put on the Easy Rise end piece here. It still looks like it could be a little bit too deep. So let's see if we can slide this around a little bit, uh, maybe get that hole aligned into this plastic piece and then through to that piece there. Actually, let's try it from this side. Oh yeah, another thing I don't tell you. Don't drop your phone when you do it. Ah, you see the move right there? Okay. I'm not having a lot of luck here, so I'm gonna go off camera for just a couple of minutes, see if we can figure out what the hell is going on here. Be right back. All right, that was pretty simple. I should have just stayed uh, with what I was doing there. So it just was stuck on the last piece of fabric, actually. So you'll see I'm all the way through now. Let's flip this thing around and you'll see it right there. Okay, so that's how we poke through it. Now we're gonna come back to the tool, excuse me, right there. You'll see we poke through it. Now we're gonna come back to this tool and we're gonna thread the tape through that little piece there and then we'll fish it back through to make sure that we've got, um, we've got it going through all the way. Here's our spool um, assembly, and it's going to clip in. It's going to go in and then turn sideways. But uh, I was holding it upside down. So when you'll see here is the tape tail. Now, you want to be careful. It does come with a rubber band around it. But when you take that off, be careful. You don't want the spool to unwind on you. But we just need enough here so we can start threading it and send it through. So I'm going to put the rubber band so I pulled it out a little bit. Now I'm going to put the rubber band back on it. Let's 
so that it won't uh, continue to unwind. So I moved the whole mechanism just off to the edge of the table because I want to be able to move this piece up and down uh, through there. Again, like one of those things that they just, you know, don't tell you. It's kind of a hint. You might go like, yeah, duh. Yeah, I got it. Whatever. Okay. So you see I'm going to fish this through. And all we're trying to do is to follow this paper clip back through to get that tape threaded. So we've got the paper clip out, but it's still, this thing's just not strong enough. All right, that's wicked annoying. I'm gonna, I flipped it back over. I'm gonna try to thread this through. Please don't get stuck. All right, we're through. So maybe that's a better way to go ahead and do this. So now that I'm through, and I'm sure that's what the professionals will tell you, All right, so now I'm pulling the tape through or I looped it back through the piece and now I'm gonna thread it back through and it's really that simple. So now that I've got it in here, I wanna, I'm gonna take off, actually I'm not gonna do that just yet. And you'll see that I've got it through the bottom because I still need to put on um, the end cap piece. So again, I wanna make sure I'm over the hole. And I think that's pretty good. Okay, so you see I've got the tail. So let's flip this thing over. And what you'll see is I've got uh, that piece, maybe it's too long, so Let's wind it back up a bit. Maybe we'll just switch it and turn it. There we go. It seemed to be a little bit easier there. So I had a lot of tail there. <clears throat> so I'm just winding this back up a little bit so it's not too long. It's just easier to work with. Pull the clutch rod back out. All right, so this piece when Hunter Douglas ships it to you, it comes with these two pieces. You need to break these two pieces off. You don't need the middle piece, you need those two end pieces. So I've already done that, if I can find them. And here they are. So this is the plug that will go in in that direction, but it's this piece that you wanna be able to thread this through. This takes a little bit of finesse, so be patient. Take your time, don't get angry like me, don't curse at everybody, just keep moving forward. Here we go. Oh, sorry, important piece, right? Slip this through first. See how that plug will sit in there. Then you thread this through the three pieces. In one way, back through the middle, See, take patience. I'm already getting irritated. All right, I'm good with that. So you'll see I've got, I don't know, it looks like about two and a half to almost three inches of tape tail. And you'll see why that's gonna be important. I'm gonna stick my clutch rod back in all right, so with the clutch back in, you'll see I'm spinning it, and you'll see this working here, and I wanna get that in seated correctly. Right in there, just like that. And leave this tape tail. So, let me show you what I mean by that. This was a huge pet peeve of mine when I did this first video. These are the things that they don't tell you. You saw earlier how short that tape tail was and how difficult it was. I had to completely mangle that thing 
to try to get it back out. So just do that. Put a piece of tape over it. Just let it stick. It's all going to be in the bottom. No one's going to see it. It doesn't have to be clean. It doesn't have to be short because it's being kind to the next person. And that next person will likely be me. Be me. All right, let's flip this over and do the other side now. So here we got to start from that beginning, which is we got to mangle that thing out. But the, don't forget to put the clip back on. This is the clutch component. I want to take this piece off and want to put a new one on. So Hunter Douglas has also shipped us a new one here. A little bit of a different style on a connection, so that's to the window. We'll need to work something there. But let's feed this back through. Hold one off. All right, there we go. So now we've got this piece, piece uh, put back together. All right, so if you take a quick look at this, it's kind of hard to see, but there are three, I don't know what you call them, splines in here. One of them is a little bit taller than the other two. And on the clutch rod itself, you'll see there's a, that spline there. And one of them, again, is deeper than the others. So it looks like I'm gonna be able to get these lined up. Like so, let's see if we get a better camera angle. Ooh, again, painful to watch, painful to do. Okay, I got it. All right, make sure that's down. Okay. Oh, you can't see, sorry. I just moved that that uh, that blocker, that cap, that piece that holds the clutch rod so it doesn't stick out uh, on the back end here because I do need to uh, put back on this piece.
that the the piece the tensioner right here the new one is different than this style so this style clips into the clip that's screwed into the window sill or the side of the window this one requires a different one so we're going to take the clip off for this uh, and then we will hang it and then we will figure out where to put the new clip on for this and attach it So I lowered it just a little bit, and that's because I want to get access easily to the back part of this top rail. And just like I, when I took it off, I'm going to put it onto the back of the, these clips and curl it up. I'm going to curl it up and we'll snap them in. All good, just like brand new. Thank you, Hunter Douglas. Let's now attach the tensioner and we'll call it done. So for the tensioner clip, you have a couple choices. First thing, and I talk about this in the other video as well, you wanna make sure you're looking at the lines and that this is the one that's to lower it and it's on the outside, meaning it goes to the top of the spool or to the clutch. So. I want to make sure I don't twist it. I want to make sure I have this so it just looks really neat uh, and doesn't have a problem binding. So we're all done, let's wrap this whole thing up. So what I've learned about the Hunter Douglas blinds is that they're really pretty simple stuff. You just gotta get into it. There are things that after all the videos that you watch and everything that you read, there are things that they don't tell you. I'm hoping that these videos will help out. I know that they've helped out a bunch. I get a lot of questions on the YouTube channel on the other video. Uh, ping me or write to the comments if you have questions about some of this stuff as well. Either way, I hope that this uh, video, this instructional video was helpful, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.